think this is an important uh, point to document uh, because often social movements uh, start and they go through different phases of development and you know they mature sometimes they don't sometimes they disintegrate sometimes they dissipate sometimes they disappear and you know reemerge and so on, resurge and so on and so forth in the social theory of you know movement but then in our context every other place had a different uh, challenge i mean if you what what you saw in madare is not the same thing that you saw in mombasa for example and uh, in a sense there was too much activity going on in the in the informal settlement too much uh, engagement with development actors of various types and instead of it generating capital it was actually taking capital away from you know the communities in these uh, informal settlements because you had too much going on and and they were not speaking to each other every other person came in and you know whatever they thought works is what they implemented and in the fullness of time i think uh, a lot of the groups that were doing this you know started to have duplication duplicity overlapping programs and so on and so forth and then a lot of fights you know for turf and resources uh, and even then the politics then also became extremely difficult to navigate because it generated now a class of gatekeepers in the informal settlement who were not now working for the community but were keeping the gate for any one of the actors who are coming in and i think that's what led us to the realization that we need to do this in a systematic way and so those institutions that have come up to support the movement you know had to put their act together and you know develop a very concrete systematic platform that then channels its support in a particular way uh, and this that this is how the Ngano support trust you know came to be because one if you are a member of the movement could you also be a member of the support institutions and you know there was in a sense a conflict of interest that sometimes didn't allow work to proceed the way it, it, it ought to have proceeded and so we then began to think how do we make a clean break between those who are supporting and those who are living and doing the day to day stuff you know at the at the movement and uh, that really helped us because in Mombasa then Ujama began to see itself not as you know a member of the movement in the strictest sense of the word but as a support institution around which every other person who came in with any ideas around the informal settlements then bounced those ideas you know so that we were able to make sure that there's decency and there are no uh, ugly fights you know similar to what had been witnessed before the other thing that this helped was to remove the movement you know from the fetters of program because you know the support institutions come in with programs and projects and sometimes they want to make the, their project the most important thing you know for the movement and we're saying no let's not uh, bog down the movement with our project baggage because your project will end and certainly the movement needs to stay on so separating the idea of the movement from the support institutions was therefore useful so that if you are doing projects you can go to the support institution and you know works about your project there but by the time it is delivered to the movement it is not supposed to tell the movement now stop doing this start running in this direction you know so that the dictates of the movement remain and the principles of the movement and the pillars sometimes the movement is stronger without money uh, my experience i mean i don't know about other people's experiences but i've seen an experience where when people invest their own money in something they they tend to be very vigilant about how that money is used and how things happen within the entity they give it time they afford it their moment because they put you know their money in it uh but there are moments when money comes into something like a movement and then all of us become fund managers uh this the money has this habit of turning all of us into fund managers and we all now start managing the fund and we forget 
the, 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 the vision and mission that the movement has set out to do. Uh, and so these are not things you can deal with easily if you don't have institutions that their job is to think about you know, things like that and what you do you know, when you face such challenges. And yet also it's true that mobilizers eat, they need food and so on. <laughs> so, so, so it's some kind of an egg-chicken situation that requires constant thinking and it requires constant uh, you know, strategizing. And you know tactics. So that's the, and this is where I think the idea of a support mechanism running side by side with the movement was, I think, for me an innovation.